He was best known for his obscure general knowledge on Pointless, but Ooh. more recently, Richard <laughs> Osman has made a name for himself in the literary world with his madly successful Thursday Murder Club detective series. And now he's on the case again. Please welcome Richard Osman. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Felicitations to you, Judy. Oh, no! <laughs> you there you go. She's gone. Oh, my God. That's a lovely word. That's a lovely word. OK, so anyway, let's have a little chat about this first. So here we go. The Bullet That mm. Missed. This mm. is the. The new book in the Thursday Murder Club series, and I'm going to try not to say this with seething envy. Mm. Five and a half million copies sold globally. Wow! Amazing. Of, gonna... of the whole so series. Good. Yeah. At what point did you realise that you had this sort of like runaway hit on your hands? Well, I mean, when when I wrote the first one, and anyone who's ever written a novel, when you write it, you sort of think, this is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> no, I put it away in a drawer a couple of times. Mm. Uh, but funnily enough, as, as soon as it started... In the UK, I thought, oh, perhaps people will buy it because they know that I'm on telly. As soon as it started selling in Germany and America and Japan and those countries, as soon as you saw, like, top ten there, you think, oh, they, they don't know... Point they've never seen Pointless. For example, so I thought yeah. perhaps they just like the book. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it, was, it was on that first one when it sort of went beyond the UK. I thought, oh, we, we, we might have something on our hands here. So, what do you think it is? A bit, I mean, for anybody who hasn't read it, and I don't yeah. think there is anybody, but anyway, <laughs> um, it's obviously set in a, in a senior living, like a retirement a complex. Village, yeah. And I love the concept, mm. which is that because you know, a lot of the time people get written off, and it's like all of these people had professions. Yeah. And they put their professions to good use. But what do you think it is about? the book that particularly struck a chord with people? Well, I think, you know, everyone loves Agatha Christie and it's got yeah. the spirit of that. Um, you know, there are jokes in it because the characters are funny, but there's also sadness in it because, because of the age they are and the grief that they're around. And I think it's just exactly what you said. I met all of these people in their 70s. And I thought, oh, my God, the stuff that you know yeah. and the wisdom that you have, and yet you're sort of shut away in our yeah. culture. We don't yeah. see you, we don't hear from you. So true. And so, you know, I'm doing my good bit there, but also they're doing, they're helping me because if you've got characters who are incredibly wise, but also invisible, they make the perfect detectives, <laughs> you know, because they yeah. can open any door, they can yeah. talk to anybody. And so the second I started writing, I thought, there's no problem the four of you can't solve. Is that because everyone thinks they're harmless because they're... Ooh. Exactly yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly that. That, that, yeah. that thing of ah. Oh, but sweet, you did. Yes. You did actually think that no one would read the first one, and then the second one sort of, you know, was easier. But it, that that put, that puts the pressure on, doesn't it, to keep it going? It does put the pressure on when when, when you're writing, knowing that people are going to read it. I quite like it. Is the truth. You know yourself with something like Loose Women. If you're doing a show that no one's watching, it's like. Mm. You know every day that loads of people are watching. Yeah. And actually, that's fun. It makes it much more fun. It means yeah. when you're prepping for it, when yeah. you're thinking about it, you know people are going to watch. And now when I'm writing, I'm sitting writing, I know that people are going to read it, which is, which is a, a sort of a pressure, but a re really a lovely pressure. Mm. And I know if I've just made myself laugh, I was just reading through something yesterday and I was at floods of tears at the end. Uh, and I just thought, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> other, other people would be crying. I know it's, I know it's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. Well, your it's wife not... must be very, very proud of you. You just got married in yeah. December. Yeah. yeah. Did, yeah, yeah, two weeks ago. Thank you very much. Wonderful. <laughs> A very yes. frisky you... time of year. Yes, so very, very frisky. So I was quite terrified. A bit... <laughs> well, well, yeah, it's terrifying to get married, yeah. right? It, all of our friends are there. You know, there's so much you have to organise. You've got the band, you've mm. got the booze, mm. you know, you've got, you've got the ceremony itself, all that stuff. So, yeah, before... And also, it was a day... It was so filled with love that day. And just everyone we knew and everyone we loved and people from school and people from my whole life, yeah. they were all there. And you just think, just don't get it wrong. Mm, and of course, yeah. the second you're there and you're standing opposite each other and mm. you're doing the vows, you know that it can't mm. go wrong. But beforehand, yeah, it was absolutely <laughs> terrifying. Oh my God, how lovely. lovely. And, and, and the thing is about wedding, you feel so, you just feel so watched in every mm. single way. Don't you? Now, I wanted to talk to you about two things. Food yeah. addiction, because yeah. we connect on that. Yeah. And, I, and I feel passionately that we need to talk more about that because people don't have any understanding mm. about Agreed. how debilitating that can be. There's no such thing as abstinence, right, from food. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've, I've spoken about it before, and mainly because most men don't. And the point is, lots of people believe food addiction doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. okay? And that's fine. By the way, if that's your opinion, that's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. For the rest of us, when after I've spoken about it, the amount of messages I get and people stopping me in the street saying, thank you for talking, saying, my husband came in and spoke to me in tears, he just said, that's me. Yeah. 
the thing he described there, that's me. So that describe it, it for us. What it's, is it? Well, essentially, for, uh, for any sort of food addiction is sort of an over-reliance on food, an inability to control your food intake, or if you are controlling it, controlling it very, mm. very, very strictly. Mm. Uh, and in the same way that if someone is an alcoholic or a drug addict, you know, it's that, but for food. But if you are... An and this is from young, very young. Oh, from, yeah, yeah. 10 years old or something. I've never... I mm. can't remember anything else. I mean, the belief is that it's always there, isn't it? Yeah, food I, addiction. I, I, I think so. And if you are an alcoholic or drug addict, the, the cure is absolute abstinence, which you can do. You can live your life without booze, and it's really, really hard for those people. But if you have an addiction to something like love or to food, you have oh, to yeah. have it. Mm. So it's quite a difficult thing to do, and we live in a society where... This food is packaged so, mm. you know, and the, the, the cheaper food is packaged everywhere. even more. Yeah, for the. For but the... it's used as a, as a way of, of medicating, like in the same yeah, way that in yeah. the same way that alcohol and drugs yeah. are. And it's just, I find it astonishing that people can't accept that. But you, that you, it would be the. You just have to look around. You yeah. just, the world around us doesn't make sense yeah. if we are not in an epidemic of food addiction. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't make sense. The shape of things do not make sense if, if that's not the case. And again, I'm very happy for people not to believe it, but I'm also happy to talk about it because the more people accept it, this, this moment you start talking about it, it loses some of its sting. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the and point. what's because... the root of your... Have you got, got to the bottom of the root of why it well, started? you know what? My father left when I was very young, and perhaps mm. it was the only thing I did have any control over. Maybe it's that, but who yeah. knows is the truth. Yeah. You know, we all have trauma, don't mm. we? And it's, yeah. it's just a trauma which hasn't been dealt with. And you think, oh, no, I'm gonna, I'll use this instead, I'll medicate with this. And, you know, suddenly it's like 40 years later. And oh, my God, I'm still so, doing it's it. it's so exhausting, the constant yeah. thought about it. And, and, and also, yeah, it doesn't feel... There's something sort of doomed about alcoholism. You can sort of talk about yeah. it, and there's something sort of tragic, whereas food addiction is so It's kind of tragic in a bit, yeah. sort of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's something, rock and, yeah. Like, there's yeah, something yeah. rock and roll. There's something rock and roll about it as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, and a lot that. of people that have alcoholism or, or drug addiction, the last place they would face is their food addiction, because it often yeah, looks yeah. It's so complex. I also wanted to ask you about heightism. Yes. And I hope you don't mind me saying this, but I noticed that you did something earlier. When you came in, you immediately made a joke about your height and, right, and the and tree. tree. Yeah. Mm. And I thought, I used to do that all the time when I was over overweight and I would just make that joke before anyone else could. Yeah. And are you aware that you do that? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you sort of have to. I'm not, I spoke about it in, in slightly tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I talked about this thing of, 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 of people, everyday people telling me I'm tall. Mm. And I, I was talking about this, this so incredible annoying. generation. Yeah. Like, I didn't know. know. But we are all... <laughs> Come from the same generation, roughly, yeah. and we've all got a sort of, sort of a thick skin, and we were brought up just, to, you know, just take it. And actually, yeah. there's, there's something to be said for that. But I love this new generation who won't take it. Yeah, yeah, they say, Do you know yeah, what? yeah, yeah. Don't and they, so body shaming is not yeah. something I, I was aware of. And, you know, but this generation, they say, don't body shame. And me, did don't that happen in be. when you were young as well? Were you very tall, ten year old? Oh, yeah, for example? I was tall from sort of maybe sixteen or something. Right. So, so all so your life, you've just shut up about it because that's what everyone tells you to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And listen, there are worse problems in the world. I'm aware of it, but it's just that interesting thing of yeah. every single day. Ten people tell you. So you someone's think... feeling they can talk about your Way physicality. You yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what, it's but, a weird yeah. thing. And by it? the way, sometimes it's lovely. Sometimes it's an icebreaker, and you'll talk. You'll be on the bus, and you'll chat to people. You think this is great. But sometimes it's people. Or somebody goes, "Oh, you're yeah. a very tall man." Exactly. But very, some, very tall man. But some people people <laughs> seem desperate. Yeah. For, you, for, for, for them to be normal and you to be abnormal. Yeah. OK, well, Richard, it's been fantastic. We've run out of time. Oh, but no. uh, we love the bullet price. that missed um, is, you know, Bye. another Bye. smash hit already. So um, come on and talk to us about the next one. Of course. It's the movie. Next yeah, time. I'll talk about that. <laughs>